Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm going to show you how to create your very own LUTs. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Now first off, I want to give you a very simple explanation of what a LUT actually does. Think about it as adjusting your image with all these classic adjustments here, for example curves, color balance, levels, HSL. And then think about you would save that out as a JPEG, but without the picture, only the changes you did to the colors, the saturation, and also the brightness of the different values. So to give you a visual example, think about it in the way that, for example, this kind of green comes in, we will call it 15. You will always want to turn that into this kind of blue, let's call it 408, and also maybe make it a little bit darker and change the saturation a little bit. So a lot is basically an equation that looks for different kind of values and turns it into other values depending on what you have set up for that. Now here is another very important part to understand. It does not take into consideration regional changes or effects. So for example here we have made some changes where the left side is pink, the right side is green and in the middle we have a huge twirl effect. The LUT is not going to save that. It will treat every kind of color in the same way depending on what you have set up for that. Another important thing that we need to talk about is the difference between creating your own LUTs and downloading LUTs from the internet or buying them from the internet. Now to create your own LUTs is not really hard, it's actually quite easy and it helps you because you know what kind of pictures you take, what kind of style you like and what kind of workflow you have. But the big difference here is that if you think about LUTs from the internet, they are like if you think about buying a cookbook from a cook that you really like. So you want to see that taste, you want to feel the taste and see how the colors are set up and how the tastes are set up basically. As you know, I have created two different LUT packs so far. This one here with 80 different LUTs in it, I will link it in the video description. And the second one is called Tasty LUTs. It has 44 different LUTs in the pro version in there. I will also link it in there. And I have preloaded some of these LUTs. So this is the original picture. And these are some of the changes. And as you can imagine, it takes quite some experience to get these looks to work and to get the LUTs to work and to get this kind of specific tastiness and look and expression into the image, you know. And for that reason, it is nice to have these LUTs from the internet and also to use it to learn from them. How are the saturation set up? How is the contrast set up? How does it work with colors? How does it change colors from the original image? So this can be a really nice learning experience and also a very good shortcut to get certain tastes and certain looks into your image. All right, enough said about the basics of LUTs. Let's talk about how you create your own LUTs. And you will be amazed how easy that is. I will delete all this so we have only the original picture. And now the first thing you want to do is look at the picture and say, what kind of changes do I want to make to the picture? So let's go in here and say, let's go and have a curve. I want to have a little bit more contrast in here. So I will pull this down so I get a little bit more structure in here and also pull this up here so we have these areas nice and bright. So you can see darker areas are a little bit darker, the brighter areas are a little bit brighter. So that's basically um, what a little bit of contrast is doing, but we do it with the curve because we have a finer control over it. That already looks kind of nice. Um, I want to do some additional adjustments. For example, let's go into the white balance. I want this image to be a little bit warmer maybe like so. Okay. And then also go in here and I want to use uh, the color balance here. We kind of play around uh, with the cyan and red, magenta, green, yellow, blue. Uh, balance here. So let's make this down here. I want this to be a little bit more blue and then also have a touch more violet over here. Let's see for the red values. Um, let's make the sunset a tiny bit warmer up here. So um, as you can see this 
affects different, not different areas, but different colors. But because there is different colors in different areas in this picture, this is why it affects different areas also. So you can see if I turn this on and off, it's a subtle change, but it's a very nice change to the different tones in here. So you have a little bit of a nicer, warmer blue down here, a little bit more violet, a bit more warmer sunset in the background. So that is very nice. And let's see if we want to do an initial, an additional change here. Um, we could use a vibrance, for example, to set that up. Set this on top, push up the vibrance a little bit. Uh, so the colors are in a subtle way a little bit stronger and um, yeah, that's a nice change. So let's turn all of this off and on. You can see this is the original image. This is the change that we have done. And now you can say, I want to save this as a lot. So here is another important part. You go over here to file and you go to export lot. And this will give you a little preview with the cat here. You can also load your own preview image to see another um, preview that you are maybe more acquainted with to see how that would look on there. You can give it a title. I would keep it in a cube format and I would set the quality to 64 in here. You can go as high as 126, but this will also make the LUT a lot bigger. So 64 should work in most cases. And the important thing about cube format is you can use it with a lot of different software. So different kind of photo software, different kind of video software, even live streaming software can use a lot to adjust the look and this can be super helpful for you that you can on the go have these kind of looks and another little trick here if you have a professional camera equipment and a professional preview screen for your camera sometimes in the really good cameras in the really good uh, screens you can load the lot in there to see even if you use a raw picture, how that would look with the LUT applied afterwards. So that can be really helpful to have a kind of a preview of what you're going to get on your computer later on. All right. So that's basically it. This is how you create a LUT. As, you, as I said, you can use all these kind of adjustments. Oh, one more thing before you go is how do you actually load the LUT afterwards? And you go in here to adjustments again. You go to LUT as it says down here. And then you simply click here on load LUT like this. And you can load any kind of LUT that you have created so far. You can see here all these cube LUTs. And um, just click on one and you can load it in and you can also adjust the opacity and the blend mode. So you have some settings, but not these adjustment layers. So that's also very important to understand. You don't have the adjustment layers. Now, um, there is one more thing I want to say here, and that is you can, as it says here, infer LUTs. Inferring LUTs means that you load the original untouched picture and then you load the second picture in there that has changes applied to it and it will try to figure out the changes and create a LUT from that. And that can work, but it's a little bit risky. I have experienced that you might get color banding from that. Uh, so be a bit cautious with that. I would rather go with your own adjustments that you have set up rather than this infer LUT way because that can be a bit problematic. Okay, that was it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you have more questions, please let me know in the comments and see you soon. Bye.